Hello, this is Helen Alexander. I'm going to be sharing the International Sunday School lesson for Sunday, Janu June 26, 2016. And the subject is Ignoring God's Clear Truth. The scriptures are found in Romans 1, 18 through 23, and 28 through 32. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the study today. And Lord, we ask you to bless the hearers today. And we ask you to <clears throat> speak what it is that you want to say. Help us to apply these scriptures to our lives that we might live holy and present ourselves holy before you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, as I said, the subject of today's lesson is ignoring God's clear truth. The Apostle Paul is the author of the book of Romans. Uh, the scriptures come from Romans chapter 1 today. So in this letter, Paul was writing a letter to the Romans. So he said that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. He also explained to the Romans that God's wrath is revealed <clears throat> against unbelievers as a result of their failure to worship him and to obey his word. So that brings us to uh, today's lesson, Romans 1, 18 through 23. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. So here the Apostle Paul says that the anger of God is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and injustices of people who know the truth but reject it. They heard it, but they refuse to accept it, whether they are Jew or Gentile. Praise the Lord. So God's anger is revealed because God has manifested himself to all men. Many hear the word, but they desire to follow their own desires. They refuse to obey the word of God. So they put God on the back burner, so to speak. They just push him aside to fulfill their own desires. So the Lord has manifested himself in his creation. And yet there are many people in this world that profess not to believe in God. All of us are born with a conscious, some consciousness of God and uh, his creation. So what comes to my mind is um, sometimes you hear people when they suddenly um, hit their foot or they we call, you know, stump your toe. <laughs> the first thing that comes out of their mouth is Jesus. So obviously there is some consciousness of God in all of us, whether it's a believer or an unbeliever. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the corrupt, the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Glory to God. So here Paul continues his letter to these Romans and he speaks of the people that had a knowledge of God, but they did not honor the Lord. And they became, he says they became vain, which means to be empty and foolish, silly and unwise, and wicked in their thoughts. Can you imagine wicked in their thoughts? And this caused their understanding to be darker, which means that they became spiritually blind. And that's a sad state to be in when you are spiritually blind and you cannot see the things that God has prepared for us in his word, even in his creation. When you're spiritually blind, the devil just darkens things to you. You cannot understand the word. Praise the Lord. When you are unsaved, you cannot understand the word of God. Praise the Lord. We can read it and we can quote it, but we cannot truly understand it without his spirit. So the Bible says they were ungrateful and they changed their worship from a God that lives eternally to idols. They made and worshiped idols. Idols that looked like man, and they also worshipped animals. So, 
this brings to my mind the story of um, that Paul wrote about Athens, praise the Lord. And you can read that in Acts 16 and 7. He said that the whole city was given to adultery. Can you imagine? Everybody in that city worshipped these images. Glory to God. They had no power. They could not answer them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They could not do absolutely anything for them. And yet, they bowed down to these statues. That's how the devil deceives us. Praise the Lord. He makes it look like there's something to it when there's absolutely nothing to it. God is revealed through his creation, his ability, and his divine nature. So those that don't believe in him are without an excuse. Also, sin is inexcusable. Because when we're filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, it is the power of God to keep us. But if we sin, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But he also expects us to refrain from sinning. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, the Bible says there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. We can then expect judgment. You can read that in Hebrews 10.26. The bottom line is that when God cleans us up, we are to stop sinning. Praise the Lord. If we fall then all we do is get up, praise the Lord. We get up, we repent, hallelujah, and then we have a made-up mind. We make up our minds that we are not going to commit that sin again because the Bible says it is with the mind that we serve Christ. So we have to have a mind not to want to sin. And then God has given us the power of the Holy Ghost to keep us, praise the Lord. God does not force us to obey him, but he's given us a power that if we are willing to obey the power, then we do not have to sin. Although Romans 1, 24 to 27 is not a part of today's lesson, um, these scriptures are connected to today's study because they reveal God's punishment when those people turned away from him, refused to worship him, and began to worship idols. The Bible says that God gave them up to uncleanness, lusts, and disgraceful affections. The Bible says that the women change the natural use of their bodies into that which is against nature. You can read that in Romans 1, 26 to 27. So, the women were having sex with women, and the men were having sex with men. The Bible is written for the believers. So, I believe in this study today that the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to the body of Christ. Homosexuality is against the word of God. The Bible says it is against nature. You can read that in Romans chapter 1 verse 27. Romans 1 28 through 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, the Bible says God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So the Bible here says that these people, they wanted to do these ungodly things. Therefore, God turned them over to a reprobate mind. And that is a mind that is void of judgment. He turned them over to a reprobate mind to do the things that they desired to do. And not only did they become homosexuals, but then they were filled with other evil doings. As believers... We just take a look at some of these things here that's mentioned in today's lesson uh, that God hates. Praise the Lord. We see that homosexuality is against nature. Then the Bible talks about fornication. That's having sex without being married. Praise the Lord. Wickedness. Doing things with an evil purpose or a desire. Covetousness. A greedy desire to have more. Desire to have something 
that doesn't even belong to you, not being satisfied with what God has already blessed us with. Praise the Lord. We do not have to be greedy and to desire something that somebody else has. Glory to God. God is faithful. He will provide every need. Then he talks about maliciousness, intending to do harm, to be spiteful. Then he talks about envy and jealousy. Envy means jealousy. There's no need to be jealous of anybody. Praise the Lord. Even with your gifts, you don't have to be jealous of anybody else's gifts. The Bible says that your gifts will make room for you and that God will bring you before great men. Don't need to be jealous of anybody. Praise the Lord. Murder, which means slaughter. And that can be both naturally and spiritually because we can kill people with our tongue. Praise the Lord. Malignity, meaning a bad character. This is what happened to all of these people, praise the Lord, when they turned away from God and began to worship false idols. Whispers, sleek, secret slanderer, slandering people in secret. Backbiter, attacking one's character when one is not present. Inventors of evil things, those things, people that imagine how to do evil things. And he talks about boasters, those who brag. God doesn't want us to brag, praise the Lord. He wants us to be humble people, glory to God. Disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. You know the Bible says that that is the first commandment was promised. If you obey your parents, the Lord promised that you will have long life. Obey your parents in the Lord, that your days will be long upon the earth. This is what the Lord is saying. Disobedient to parents, glory to God. This is what they were doing. Without understanding, foolish thinking, then covenant breakers. Never kept their promises, praise the Lord. Couldn't believe anything they were saying. They would promise you one thing, knowing that they weren't going to do it. Without natural affection, meaning hard-hearted, implacable, unable to agree with others. People that always want to argue and never, ever come to an agreement. People that always want to be right. We're not always right, praise the Lord. <laughs> none of us, none of us are always right. We have to be humble. Sometimes you got to just take the lower seat. Praise the Lord. Unmerciful, meaning no pity or compassion. Paul said that these, uh, these ungodly people were fully aware of their sins and the judgment of God. Yet they had pleasure in committing these sins and they were happy with others that also committed these sins. Can you imagine what that is what happens? Praise the Lord. When we worship something other than God. Consider some of the above uh, mentioned sins. God gave a command to Israel that they should not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. You can read that in Leviticus 18, 22. So homosexuality is an abomination to God. Regarding fornication, Paul called for the punishment of one that was in the church at Corinth he was fornicating with his father's wife. And then, on another note, there were two women in Philippi. They were guilty of the implacable sin, unable to come to an agreement. So Paul said to them, Euodia and Santaki, you both belong to the Lord. So please agree with one another. You can read that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. So Paul clearly pointed out that anyone that forsakes God and worships something other than God, praise the Lord, can easily practice all of these sins that are mentioned in today's lesson. And therefore, will become subject to God's wrath. The Bible says that the penalty of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So the penalty is death, and sometimes it results in natural death. Natural death as well as spiritual death. The Lord God is a loving God and he's a forgiving God. But however, he has an expectation of his people to serve him in holiness and righteousness all of our days. You can read that in Luke 175. And then Solomon said the whole duty of man is to reverence God and to keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. The Lord Jesus Christ paid a high price for us. Yes, he did. Glory to God. He shed his blood at Calvary. 
a sacrifice to redeem us back to God. His blood washed away all of our sins. And then he sent his power, the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, he did. He sent us the gift of the Holy Ghost. He sent it into the earth so that he can live inside of us. And this great power is strong enough to prevent us from yielding to sin. We do not have to yield to sin. I thought about Eve in the garden. We cannot. We can stop before we go to finish sin. She saw the fruit. She could have stopped then. Then she desired it. She could have stopped then. And then she partook of it. She had plenty of time to say no. And so do we. Glory to God. So, the power of the Holy Ghost keeps us from yielding to sin. It is our seal until the day of redemption. Even if you don't have to have the power, all you need to do is repent. Yes, just repent. Tell the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I accept Jesus as Lord. It's just that simple to repent, to ask God to forgive you. And then... Ask the Lord to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's his promise, Lord God. The Bible says, if ye, then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You can read that in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Glory to God. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he has a remedy for sin. We do not have to sin. We do not have to yield to it. And then the grace the grace that God restores upon us. If we fall, all we need to do is confess our sins. The Bible says that Lord Jesus Christ will forgive us and he will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. So I pray that you've enjoyed this study. And Father, we thank you for this study today. And we ask you, Lord God, that it will touch the hearts, praise the Lord, of all of your people that hear it. And that even I will just Make sure, Lord God, that I line up with your word and that I live holy and that I don't fall into any of these sins, praise the Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord God. We know we are not perfect. None of us are perfect. But through you, Lord God, through you, we have the power not to yield to temptation. But thank you for that grace that if we make a mistake, the love and kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ is ready to forgive us and to restore us. And we thank you for it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.